The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. The title of my message is A Cure for Worry. Worry is a disease, and we've got to find out what the cure is for worry. You know, the scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, if you put it in English in a different way, how would you say it? Don't be anxious, right? Don't be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request be known unto God. Okay, let your request be known unto God. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. But in prayer and supplication, make your request be known unto God. You got a problem? Let it be known unto God. It's not that he doesn't know, but he wants you to speak it out so that when you speak it out to God, you're really turning it over to him. So you don't want to keep it so that you're not anxious. Don't be anxious, but tell God about it and go on your business. That's basically what it's saying. So scientists agree that fear is harmful and destructive. But faith can set you free. This is a scientific study. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 from the New American Standard Bible. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life. So how many have been worried here about some things? You got to stop it. Stop worrying. Isn't that what he's saying? Do not worry about your life. As to what you will eat, what you will drink, nor for your body, as to what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? So, worry doesn't make you healthier to live longer. Okay? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor their, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory 
clothed himself like one of these. The lilies were clothed better than Solomon. And you know who clothed them? God did. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? I mean, it doesn't say that here, but I can use my sanctified imagination and say, or well, what kind of a car will we drive? It doesn't have to be a Lamborghini or whatever. It can be a VW, that's okay, as long as you get places. All right? <clears throat> For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So deal with the issues of today, today. Don't think about the issues that are coming up tomorrow and figure out the issues that are coming up because they may not come up. So why add stress to yourself? <coughs> so we're now saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. We're all citizens of heaven. And in heaven there is no worry. There's no pain, no sorrow, no tears. And we're heavenly creatures now that we're saved, aren't we? Heavenly citizens. Amen? So therefore, we have the right to be free from worry in the kingdom of God on earth. We have the right to be free. We have the right to be free. So I got a few bullets here from the scripture that we read. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. You know, Jesus said, not by bread alone shall a man live, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Another bullet, God feeds the birds and you are more valuable than the birds. Uh, it costs God quite a bit of money. Millions of dollars a day to feed all the birds of the earth. And he feeds every one of them. I like to hear children cry. 
Because that, that's the future church. Amen? Now, being worried is pointless. It doesn't add one hour to your life. God clothes the grass. He will clothe you. Unbelievers are anxious about provisions, but you're not an unbeliever. God knows what you need, and he will provide. And then finally, when you prioritize the kingdom of God, your provisions will be provided. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the cars and the transportation and the food and the clothing and the mortgage payment or a free house without a mortgage will be provided. I like that better than a mortgage payment. <laughs> but God can provide all of that. Now, why does the devil use fear and worry against us? Well, he wants to use that to bring about to cause us to make foolish decisions. Okay? Foolish decisions result in painful consequences. And that robs us of our faith. And it gets, you get to the point where you ask the question, where's God? And we make foolish decisions, we're worried and concerned, and then we blame God, and we complain about God, and where's God when this happened, you know? And we made the foolish decision. You know what God's answer is? A, is a neat answer. God answers us already in his word. <clears throat> so you don't have a, to have a special revelation. It's in the word. God answers why things didn't go well. You know what his answer is? Where is your faith? Now, I got proof for that. Luke chapter 8, verse 25. And he said to them, where is your faith? See, there was, it was storming. They were going to drown. And, and uh, they called on Jesus. And they said, uh, please do something. He got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. Everything was still. And then he turned around and said, you good boys, I'm glad you woke me up. <laughs> Is that what he said? No. He said, where's your faith? I don't think he said, where's your faith? I think he, he hollered at them. He rebuked them. Where is your faith? Why do you have to wake me up for this stupid storm? You could have stopped it with your faith. After all, he's, they're his disciples and he's teaching them. So they were amazed 
They were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water that they obey him? They didn't realize then. Even as Jesus did it, they didn't realize they have the power and the authority to do the same. Even after he did it, they didn't realize it. Just like when Peter decided to get out of the boat and walk on the water. What happened to the rest of them? They stayed in the boat. Aren't they his disciples? Why was Jesus walking on the water in the midst of the storm? To teach the disciples that they can walk in the midst of the storm on top of the storm. That was a lesson. And Jesus illustrated it to them. And only Peter caught on. So faith will get rid of worry and unbelief. You know what I do at night when I, when I go to sleep? I put my head on the pillow and I sleep. That's it. If I ever worry, it's during the day and I take care of it. I rebuke it and keep on going. You shouldn't lose sleep over any issue. I mean, that should be our lifestyle, is we don't have to worry about a thing. He says, don't worry. He says, don't be anxious. So why do you insist on going back and being worried and being anxious? Didn't God promise that he will do it when we ask him? He will do whatever we ask him to do? Did we believe when we prayed? Or do we have to see the manifestation immediately before our eyes so that we will believe? That's not faith. Faith is believing what you don't see. And when you see it, you don't have to believe it's there. I mean, if I, I, I went downtown and I found myself a, a nice-looking tie and I called Pastor Daniels and said, I found you a nice tie. I'll bring it to you next Sunday. And you know what he's going to say, knowing Pastor Daniel? Thank you, brother. And he believes that I bought him the tie. Now, he didn't see the tie. He thanked me before he saw the tie. That's what faith is. Now, he's going to get it. He knows that. And we all know that when we ask God for something that he promised, we can stand, like we say in, in, uh, in proper English, you can bet your life, bet your boots. <laughs> the answer is going to come. I like Mark eleven twenty three. I mentioned it last week, but I want to mention it again this morning. Truly, I say unto you, Mark eleven twenty three, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, It will be granted him. He does not doubt, but believes. Faith will get rid of doubt. Faith replaces doubt. He will not doubt, but believe. Instead of doubting, you believe. I mean, we grew up in doubt and unbelief. We were, we were nurtured and, and, and brought up and raised up in doubt and unbelief. Our parents, poor guys, they didn't know any better. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying this is the human race. That's the way we, we think. We've got to start thinking differently. We've got to start believing 
instead of being on the negative side. We got to undo what was done. Moses had to go away for 40 years, away from Egypt to relearn and undo what he was taught. When he became a doctor in the palace, philosophy doctor, he studied all the things of Egypt and, and, and it didn't help him when it, when it came to faith. So he, he, he had to go away for 40 years and undo. The apostle Paul had to go away for 14 years into another place uh, in Damascus and, and stay there until, until he relearned and undid what he was taught. We are to relearn. You know how we relearn? We renew our mind with the word. Don't be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We got to start thinking differently, to think differently. God thinks differently. He doesn't think negativity. He doesn't think failure. He doesn't have failure in his vocabulary. You know what Winston Churchill once said? I remember the story of an old man who said on his deathbed that he had had a lot of trouble in his life, most of which had never happened. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, verse 5. It's a very interesting scripture. Thus says the Lord, Jeremiah 17, 5. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength. And whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert. And will not see when prosperity comes. But will live in stony wastes in the wilderness. A land of salt without inhabitant. Verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust, who tr whose trust is the Lord, for he will be like a tree planted by the water. Wow. If we trust, that means if we have faith, if we believe, if we stop the worry, stop worrying and being anxious, that man will be blessed, that woman will be blessed. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit. It will be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. The man, the woman of God who trusts in the Lord, who stop doubting and stop worrying. 
So the remedy for worry is faith. Lord, I give it to you. And Lord, I'm not even going to think about it anymore. I give you this problem. It's yours, not mine anymore. You take care of it. You said you will. And I'm going on to something else. That's what trust is. That's what the cure for and the remedy for worry is faith. Faith in the word. Faith in the promises of God. You know, Jesus said, uh, he told us to, to come to the Father. Any, anything we ask the Father in his name, he will do it. So, I mean, if we pray in the name of Jesus, guess what? It's done. It's done. So from now on, after, after, after you ask the Lord for something and you believe that he gave it to you by faith, what do you do? You, you go before the Lord at all times. Anyway, we pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we're always giving thanks. How do you pray without ceasing unless you're giving thanks all the time? Because when you're at work, you can't really be... Uh, you know, kneel down and, and pray. You got to do your job, but uh, but you can be thankful in your heart to the Lord. So you're always praying. You praying without ceasing, by giving thanks to the Lord at all times, because He is good and His mercy endures forever, and He will always answer prayer. He will always bring it to pass. He'll, he'll always fulfill His promises. All the promises of God are yea in Him and Amen in Him. Second Corinthians one twenty. In Jesus, we have the answer. In Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, when we pray, we're not going to pray to add to our problems. Some people pray and they fret that things are not happening. It's because they didn't understand what faith is. Or use your prayer to believe God when you pray. And then you go on and thank him. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. And I'm going to be thankful unto him, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. You know, no good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly. And he's going to give us all good things. He's going to give us whatever he promised. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.